Hi, and welcome to Fusion 360. This is Ed Robledo from the Fusion team, and I'll be telling you all about the most recent update. Let's get started. Under Preferences, you're going to notice that we've added the Reset Grid and the Electronic Options. With this option, you are able to have the grid reset every time you load your design or keep the value from your last session. You know, we like to recommend that you allow the schematic grid to reset every time, and on the PCB, keep it deselected. That way you continue to work with the grid that you have from your previous session. As you already know, the design of any electronic project requires having the necessary components available. And if you don't have them, no worry, because Fusion 360 includes an easy to use library editor. The library editor includes an IPC compliant component generator that will create the footprint and the 3D model all in the same step. With this new user interface, some of the component properties are now available via tabs instead of having a really long dialog box. Pad sizes could be modified without affecting the 3D model. And if the components have thermal pads, there'll be a third tab in which you can make those changes or add the thermal tab. Yeah, it got that easy. In an earlier update, we added the capability of changing surface mount pads without affecting the original IPC values. With this update, this is now possible with all through hole components, allowing you to fine tune the pad diameter and or the pad drill size without affecting the original model. Great if you need a bit more space for soldering or need a larger drill size to use alternative components. Please remember that these changes they don't affect the 3D model. You know, let's stay in the library and let me tell you about another time saving feature. Creating an electronic component consists of making the schematic symbol and a footprint. Then you're going to be assigning each one of the symbol pins to one of the pads. There are components that consist of really large amount of connections. Assigning each pin to a pad can be quite time consuming. We have made it possible for you to reuse pin the pad mapping from one device to another one. In this example, I've decided to take the Altera CPLD component, which currently has a single symbol with 100 pins. I decided to separate the original symbol into multiple symbols, making it a lot easier to handle on the schematic. The power pins and the IO pins have been grouped into a single symbol. Let's take a look at the original device. Notice that it consists of one symbol with the 100 BGA footprint. The pin to pad mapping has already been done for this device. Now, I've created a brand new device and I added all the symbols that we did earlier. After selecting the footprint, I will click on the connect command to begin my pin to pad mapping. But instead of mapping each one individually, I'm going to simply select the existing mapping that we have from the original device. Now every pin has been assigned to its pad. This just save you countless amount of clicks. Now, our team of librarians have remained busy and have added a library for transformers. And they've also expanded the content of our connector library to include FSC and FPC connectors. Thank you for joining us. All this and more with Fusion 360.